food is it its own romance language we're talking about fruits whole grains even nuts having a love language to themselves well don't know what i'm talking about stick around because we're about to fool around and find out Yummy, yummy, yummy. I've got love in my tummy. That was a big hit song in the 1960s, and it turns out the Ohio Express may have been well ahead of their time because there is a lot of love when it comes to the food that we eat. And different foods have their own kind of unique way of saying that, hey, I love you too. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, beans, seeds, and nuts all talk the language of L. O V E. And with the relationship of how all of this love works and eating the foods that love you back is a lovely woman in her own right and a brilliant mind. She's the director of clinical research at the Physicians Committee, the one, the only Dr. Hanna Kaliova. Great to see you again, Doc. Oh, thanks for having me, Chuck. So is it fair to say that food is in fact its own kind of unique romance language? Oh, that's exactly right. There are foods that love you back, and there are foods that don't. <laughs> uh, so let me share my screen with you, and let's get started. Foods that love you back and foods that don't. Let's talk about healthy relationships today. Let's keep it positive, Doc. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, um, just, to, just to give you a sense of what we're talking about, have you ever had a crush on someone and invested so much in the relationship only to find out that they don't love you back. Oh yeah. And that would be every every grade about three through man. three through senior year in high school. Just brutal. Just brutal. <laughs> and your heart was just broken into a thousand pieces, right? And guess what? The same can happen with foods that lo don't love you back. You know, there are some foods that taste tremendously, but they leave you with a broken heart and sometimes literally and uh, you know it can hurt as much as a breakup but today we want to focus on the foods that do love you back and the first group of the of these foods is fruits and veggies well fruits um, that's kind of love at first sight because when you're in love your body is energized you feel attractive and like nothing slows you down. And the same is true when you're eating foods that love you, love you and your body. You get energized from every meal and you no longer feel sluggish after meals or at the end of the day. It feels like being in love. And fruits, they're like love at first sight. They're sweet. They're easy to love. While veggies are more like a love of a tough coach um, they're kind of bitter in the beginning and so you need to just like do what's right because it's it's good for you right that's what a what a coach um, makes you do in one uh, meta-analysis that pulled together 81 cohort studies with more than 4 million people the researchers found out that card the risk of um, coronary heart disease was, was reduced by 12% and the risk of dying from coronary heart disease was reduced by 19% by just eating five servings of fruits and vegetables. And uh, there were additional benefits, reduced risk of stroke by 18% and risk of dying from stroke by 27%. Uh, and the fascinating part is that the researchers also analyzed which fruits and vegetables were most um, beneficial for us. So any guess which fruits might be beneficial? Number one, citrus fruit, the oranges and the grapefruits and the tangerines. And that included also the fruit juice, the citrus fruit juice like the orange juice. And uh, the most beneficial fruits also included apples and pears. Now, what about veggies? Which veggies were the most beneficial? Number one, 
garlic and onions and leeks. Number two, carrots. Number three, cruciferous vegetables. That's your cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and uh, broccoli. And number four, dark green leafy vegetables. And when we're talking about dark leafy greens, uh, let me just mention the Memory and Aging uh, Project in Chicago with almost 1,000 participants um, in uh, age 58 to 99. And the study found out that consumption of green leafy vegetables was associated with slower cognitive decline. And uh, de the decline rate for those in the highest uh, quantile of intake, which was 1.3 servings a day, um, was associated with uh, a slower uh, cognitive decline, which was an equivalent of 11 years younger in age. Can you be? Can you believe that? You can be 11 years younger in age by just eating green leafy vegetables. So. Uh, if you'd like to eat more foods that love you back, start with fruits and veggies. Fruits are the, the love at first sight. Veggies are the love of a tough coach, but they both do love you back. So eat at least five servings of fruits and vegetables a day and make sure to eat at least a serving of greens every single day. Do you like fruits and veggies, Chuck? Um, who who are you asking, you silly goose? Of course I do. I love me some fruits and vegetables all day, every day. What are some of your favorites? Yeah, my favorites are apples and pears. So those were one of the most beneficial, right? Mm. I love berries also with, with my oatmeal. Um, when it comes to veggies, it's really a love of a tough coach, kind of. You know, sometimes I feel like I need to get in the greens and uh, to get started, I just do a green smoothie in the morning to make sure that I start the day off with the greens that are so beneficial for us. Um, and then having a salad for lunch is 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 not is not difficult. It's it's just the breakfast. Like I prefer a sweet taste. So like the green smoothie kind of helps me get in all the greens in the morning. Yeah, I think you are in line with a lot of people who probably feel the same way that a smoothie just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, you love apples and pears. I do as well. Um, how you, you said that they were kind of like number two in terms of dropping the risk of cardiovascular disease or coronary heart disease and stroke risk behind citrus. Um, how much of a difference was there between the benefit between citrus and the apples and pears that you live so much? Yeah, there was there was not, not not much of a difference. I would say the biggest difference will be seen with the fruit that you consistently eat. <laughs> so, you know, analyzing the data from these observational studies, um, they had to analyze the data that was available from the U.S. population, and most of the U.S. folks were just consuming citrus fruit and uh, apples and pears. Do we have a hypothesis of what it is specifically in citrus, in the apples, in the pears, what minerals, what nutrients might be in there that are so beneficial in terms of our health in, in this context? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, all these fruits add fiber to your diet um, without even noticing. They're so sweet. And yet the fiber will slow down the, the glucose absorption. Number two, all the antioxidants, the vitamin C, and the apples are also high in quercetin. Quercetin is one of the um, most potent antioxidants that helps in the prevention of uh, common cold and viruses. So when you fight a virus, uh, quercetin uh, can be used in tablets or you can just eat an apple. An apple a day keeps your doctor away because of the quercetin uh, it contains. Or another source might be onions. Uh, red onions are even higher than white onions in quercetin. And in terms of the veggies, like onions and garlic were number one beneficial uh, 
beneficial veggies. Interesting. And I guess along those kind of same lines, what are the dark leafy greens that we should really be looking at to, uh, you know, even if the, if it is kind of like tough love in this case, what are the ones <laughs> that we should be going for? Is it kale, which a lot of varieties can have a little bit of that bitter taste you were talking about. Is that the number one, or is it maybe a, like a swish or a rainbow chard that, you know, has a little bit different color to it? What should we really be looking at? All of these are super beneficial. So you, like any any of these will, will do your heart a favor. Gotcha. And uh, specific about the carrots, is there uh, like a, something to be said about the beta carotene uh, that would be found yeah. in there, the orange pigmentation and how that might be beneficial here? Absolutely. Beta carotene is a potent antioxidant. And what's important to say is that if you get it in tablets, you will not get the same benefit as eating eating it in carrots. So go for the carrots. Why is that? I've I've wondered that. Mm -hmm. Beta carotene isn't the only nutrient uh, where we've heard or found out something similar, where it's better to get it from the source, so to speak. So why is it that even if it's an ultra potent supplement, that we just don't absorb it the same way that we would if we were just to eat that carrot? That's exactly right. We don't understand the alchemy as much. <laughs> you know, sometimes the beta carotene in supplements can do you even more harm uh, than benefit. So go for the carrot for sure. Um, the combination in food, like the, the nutraceuticals in foods just work in symphony. And uh, we're not at the, we don't have that level of understanding to just pull together supplements like this uh, that would do the same as foods. That's a fun word, nutraceutical. Nutraceutical. Yep. Yeah, that's the word of the day. I'm just going to go ahead and declare it. <laughs> Um, so that's that's all really interesting stuff. So we've got that there. But, you know, I, we, we mentioned at the top of the show, we were also going to talk about whole grains and beans and, and nuts and seeds, which they also have their own type of love language there. Can we talk a little bit about whole grains? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, let me share my screen again. Because I'm, I'm a big fan of whole grains, um, especially in the morning, you know, oatmeal. A lot of us are big on oatmeal. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And I find that especially, you know, also with lunch and dinner, brown rice or quinoa can go with just about anything. It is super, super, super versatile um, when it comes to, to those kinds of foods. So I'm really curious about what kind of love song the whole grains are going to have in store for us here. So uh, you ready to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about the whole grains. Got Ready? It. Slides are up. Let's do it. Okay. Well, when it's chilly outside and you want to make a fire with your sweetheart, what kind of um, fuel do you like to use? Do you like to use white paper or solid uh, wooden locks? What, what would you prefer? Well, if you use paper, it'll get real hot for about three seconds. <laughs> so what a silly question, right? We all know that we love wood, uh, you know, to keep the fire long and lasting. And the same is true with whole grains. They provide us with burning, long-lasting love. In the morning... Uh, we have a few options. We can either go for the Cheerios or for oats, and they have a very different impact on our blood sugar. If we go with the Cheerios, they will just spike our blood sugar compared with oats that will keep our blood sugar more stable. And the breakfast will actually, um, you know, set a whole tone for the whole day. So look at that. You start with Cheerios in the blue line. Your blood sugar goes high, then it plummets, and uh, then it'll go higher at lunch uh, also and after each day, and it stays up the whole day. What happens if your blood sugar is high? You feel sluggish. You, you feel unproductive compared with oats that keeps your blood sugar just much more stable. Uh but, you know, the, the blood sugar control is not the only role of, of grains. 
We also uh, want to warm up, particularly on a chilly day. Uh, you know, you come inside and you just eat a meal and immediately you feel so warm. That's because of the, the release of energy in the form of heat, which is called the thermic effect of food. Now, it turns out that different foods have different thermic effect of food. So if you eat a sandwich with white bread, it has a lower thermic effect of food compared with a whole grain sandwich, which will release 50% more energy in the form of heat. Uh, and in addition to the thermic effect of food, uh, the whole grains also reduce the risk of all-cause mortality, the risk of dying from any cause by 16%, the risk, from, the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease by 18%, and the risk of dying from cancer by 12%. So, in summary, whole grains just provide us with the long lasting burning energy. They improve our metabolism and increase the thermic effect of food and they prolong our life. And how, how much of the whole grains do you need to eat? Only three servings a day. That's like nothing. So I'd like to encourage you to incorporate three servings of whole grains a day and also try a new grain that you haven't um, that that you haven't tried before. Interesting stuff. There's a song as long as we're talking about love stuff here. There's a song called "Everlasting Love." I believe it was originally done by a uh, performer by the name of Carl Carlton, and uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking about as you're talking about that long burning fire for yeah. whole grains. Uh, so just three servings a day, could we really even maximize that impact a little bit more if we were to say shoot for five servings or so? Uh, you get some additional benefits with, with more servings a day, uh, but you get the most benefits with the initial three. So getting in the three servings a day uh, is most important. And if you get more, even better. And kind of as we were talking about with the leafy greens, where just as long as you eat them, you're going to be in pretty good shape. I still want to ask, are there some that provide a greater benefit than others, say quinoa over rice or amaranth or something like that? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, there are so many different grains. One of my most favorites is millet uh, because it's so nutritious. Uh, it's a traditional grain in many parts of Europe and in Africa, also in some regions. And it's so versatile. You can prepare it together with fruit in the morning, but also you can serve it where you would serve rice uh, with veggies and with beans or with tofu. Uh, so like if, if you haven't tried millet yet, I'd like to encourage you to give it a try. I forgot that you're a fan of millet. I'm a big fan of millet. Millet is so good and it's so easy to fix. Oh my goodness, it takes almost no yeah. time at all. It's so, so, so tasty. Um, I also want to go back. I want to ask you about that box of Cheerios that you cited, comparing that to mm -hmm. uh, the, the actual oatmeal. I find it interesting whenever Cheerios get brought up. By and large, a lot of us look at Cheerios as kind of being a health food. I mean, heck, it's promoted. It's marketed as such. <laughs> um, you still get a bigger benefit from Cheerios than you would another cereal that's got a ton of sugar in it, maybe even some marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a a spectrum of of the uh, cereals that that you can use for for breakfast right but there's still a vast difference between the real whole gra whole grain and any other box box cereal all right let's uh kick it over here because i know that there's a couple other uh love languages that we still need to discuss next up is beans uh which is another fascinating one and you know you you ask some people to say look the quickest way to end a relationship is to eat beans on a date i say no way you know i can't be with anyone if they don't love beans too i'm a big bean guy do you like beans dr kaliova oh i love beans and i need to say i love lentils and i love peas uh, oh, they're so good. See, and uh, could you ever be in a yeah. relationship 
if if your significant <laughs> other was not a fan of the beans and the legumes? <laughs> That's a good question. And maybe <laughs> our listeners should, should answer. <laughs> maybe. All right. Let's talk about the love language of beans. Shall we? Ooh, look at that cute dog on the screen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me start off with a story. Uh, a friend of mine was crossing a street and unexpectedly there was a car coming at her. Uh, it didn't stop at the red light and it was just uh, coming straight for her. And in the split of a second, her dog inserted himself between her and the car and took the biggest hit. Now, you know, fast forward, both of them were eventually okay. And uh, this is just to illustrate that dogs are just completely incredible. Dogs can do so much for us. Uh, they don't hesitate to risk their life uh, to do something for us. And, uh, you know, I'd like to show you that lentils and beans do have the loyal and dog-like love for us. So we're talking about the legumes, the beans and lentils and peas and chickpeas. Uh, and there are a few fascinating studies um, based on which I'm saying what I'm saying, that they really love us with a special loyal dog-like love. In one experiment, uh, the researchers brought in volunteers and they gave them either um, a, a smoothie or the same amount of carbohydrate that was consumed in lentils. And as you would expect, the, the blood sugar control was much better after lentils, even though they consumed the same amount of carbohydrate uh, compared with the, with the milkshake. But what was fascinating uh, came the second day. The second day, the researchers asked all the study participants to come back. And this time, all of them got sugary water. You know how sometimes you go to a hospital and you get the sugary water to test out your metabolism and to test out whether you don't have diabetes or prediabetes? That's the sugary water we're talking about. And guess what? These folks who ate lentils for dinner the day before, they had a much better glycemic control. Their blood sugar was lower. Uh, you know, they were much more stable compared with those who uh, who had a milkshake the day before. So if you're someone who likes soda or who likes to drink orange juice or who likes any sweets, you better become friends with lentils and beans. Now, the question is, how can this be? How can it be that you eat lentils for dinner one day? And then the next day, your blood sugar is still much more stable compared with someone who didn't eat those lentils. Well, the answer is you eat lentils one day uh, and then, you know, all the nutrients are broken down in your stomach and then they reach your intestine and your colon. And now the next day, your gut microbiome will munch on the same lentils that you ate the day before and will produce the short chain fatty acids uh, that will increase your insulin sensitivity, that will pr protect your heart, and that will improve your blood sugar control. Now, lentils and beans also protect your heart. Um, they reduce the risk of coronary heart disease by 10% and they reduce the risk of obesity by 13%. They also prolong your life by 6% overall. Uh, they, they reduce the risk of dying from any cause. And what amount are we talking about? Only half a cup to a cup a day. I mean, that's easy. Uh, if you love lentils and peas and chickpeas, um, this is the way to go. So beans and lentils and peas, they help us with blood sugar control. And uh, by that, 
They provide great benefits for our metabolism, our heart, but also our brain. We can think clear. They also protect our heart and waistline and they prolong our life. So if you've been following uh, this, this presentation, we're now including five servings of fruits and vegetables with one big serving of leafy greens a day, three servings of whole grains, and now we're also including one serving of lentils or beans or peas. Uh, okay. So... I'm, I'm liking Is where everything's mobile? going here. Yeah, I'm liking where everything's going here. And I'm wondering, Dr. Kaliova, because chickpeas obviously are included in this group, um, could you get your serving through hummus and eat some carrots with mm -hmm. that to really, you know, double up on the benefits that we've been talking about here today? Absolutely. Hummus counts as, as a legume. So you get the benefits of, from hummus. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was wondering is, you know, does the method in which the the bean or the legume uh, is prepared, does that matter here? You know, could you roast it and get that? Uh, could you make the hummus and get the same benefit? Could you bake it like a bean and, and get the same benefit there? As long as you're just getting it, you're good to go. Is that kind exactly of what we're, we're getting here? Yeah, all cooking methods are allowed. And isn't it fascinating that the benefit of eating the the beans or the lentils in this case the day before carried over to the next day when they were doing the the sugar water test like that to me yeah. is fascinating the way that it stayed in the system do we have any idea how long a single serving can stay in the system and you can reap that benefit obviously we want to shoot for that half cup to one full cup per day but you know say that you only eat it every three to four days are you still going to be reaping the rewards that's a, that's a fascinating question. I, I I'd say we need more research studies to look at how how long it'll you will still reap the benefits. Uh, but I mean, reaping the benefits the day after, I mean that's just fascinating, right? Um, Wild. Yeah wild stuff and you know i know when it comes to research you're you're the you're the woman to make it happen let me tell you something mm -hmm. you're you're so smart when it comes to i would actually love just as an aside to sit down with you for your next study just from like start to finish just to see <laughs> how your mind works because it is indeed a brilliant mind i don't say that lightly on the show y'all don't understand how intelligent this woman is i'm scared to give you an iq test because i'm not sure that the test can handle what it is you would put down on the paper like it would just uh, she's too smart can't handle this um, you're so kind chuck <laughs> but i'm just spitting facts here doc i'm just spitting facts um so this is this is all like really really fascinating stuff to me so we've got the love language here we've got the uh, the fruits the vegetables the whole grains now the the beans the legumes uh we have not yet however talked about nuts and seeds and i don't feel like we can complete our conversation of food and romance language without bringing these guys into the equation as well so what do you say you want to round out with these guys yeah let's do it all right here we go up on the screen and away we go yeah thank you uh when i was in my first year of medical school uh, one sweet lady invited me for lunch at Olive Garden, and she already had down like which which foods can be can be made vegan. And you need to understand that I was in medical school, and as a student, I was uh, on a strict budget, right? So it felt completely extravagant, you know, like it felt like spending a whole week's worth of groceries in on one meal. Uh, I mean, I remember it to this day and I'm grateful to this lady for the for the sweet invitation. I mean, the the meal was just phenomenal. Uh, it was healthy, it was vegan and it was served with love. It was so good. And you know, nuts and seeds, they provide this extravagant love for us. When you look at the caloric content in different foods, I mean, you can have a, uh, quite a few clementines or uh, three cups of popcorn to reach 100, of ca 100 calories, but only five pecans because nuts are just packed with energy. 
uh, but they also influence our gut microbiome. They reduce oxidative stress and they improve blood lipids. So they help protect our heart. But this being said, we need to be careful about the amounts that we're eating. Nuts can prolong our life. It can, they can reduce the risk of dying from any cause by 14%. Uh, they reduce the risk of dying from cancer by 9%. And they, re they reduce the risk of dying from heart disease by 26%. But the amount that we need is super small compared with the other foods. Only half an ounce to an ounce a day. And we're talking about all the different kinds of nuts. Uh, they're packed with energy, so be careful about the super small amounts that you need. They protect your, your heart and they prolong your life. And they're just nuts about you. So how will you respond? <laughs> All right, you caught me off guard with the squirrel there. I, I'm sure that there are a lot of people listening to this right now who are like, man, I got to go back and watch this on YouTube. And absolutely, there's a link for you right now in the episode notes. Um, fascinating here. I am not surprised that there appears to be somewhat of a bell curve in terms of the benefits mm -hmm. that yeah. nuts provide, just I'm sure because of their caloric and, and fat right. density. So um, just a, a half ounce to, to an ounce a day, is, is that that's what you said? That's exactly right. That is not yeah. a lot. That is easy to overdo. That's right. Some people find it easier uh, to like leave out the nuts completely and maybe just sprinkle their oatmeal with just a few seeds, you know, and or flax seed uh, that they have and just stay away from those delicious nuts sometimes. Yeah, but don't the nuts themselves have these nutrients that we need that are kind of unique yeah. to them? Or are, are there alternative sources for some of these things? So both nuts and seeds can be, can be used as the source of these nutrients. Uh, when we keep their amounts low, like we can still get the antioxidants from, from other plant foods. It's not like they're completely irreplaceable. Uh, they're just packed with energy, so we need to be super careful about the amounts. Yeah, and man, it is really hard to control those portions when it comes to yeah. nuts, right? You ever get a jar of peanuts, and it's just like, before oh. you know it, that jar is <laughs> gone. You're like, what happened? Yeah. I don't know. I just couldn't Salted stop. cashews. Oh, man. So good. <laughs> they're so good. They're so good. But you know what? You're so good here, too. Because what we have learned here is that food really is its own romance language. And as you said, you know, love the foods that love you back. And a lot of what you talked about today are foods that even the ones that, you know, are kind of like the love of a tough coach and those cruciferous vegetables yeah. that can have a bit of a bite to them, uh, they can still be daggone delicious at the same time. And so you enjoy what you're eating. Your body's going to love you for it. And that's a really symbiotic, that's a healthy relationship right there, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. All right. Dr. Hanna Kaliova, I'm glad that we have a healthy relationship with you here on the show. It's always <laughs> really good when you're here because I feel like we just learn so, so, so much. And I can't wait until you're back with some more fascinating research because I know that you and your team, you guys are always working on something. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Chuck. It's my pleasure. Dr. Hanna Kaliova, appreciate you. If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.